Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of the uh, introduction course to using Fusion 360. So in the first part where we made our Lego brick and like made a scene to go along with it, so it was a little introduction to the user interface, um, basic sketching, some simple tools like that. So what we're going to have a look at modelling in this set of videos is looking at using a few different tools to make shapes that aren't necessarily all straight edge, a little bit more curved, a little bit more complex, like that. So the video is going to be broken down into four parts, like the first one. So in the first part, we're going to cover inserting a canvas to reference your model. And that canvas can be either um, a photograph or an image you've taken from Google, or it can be a hand sketch that you brought in to do as a reference as well. How to calibrate that canvas so you know it's going to be the exact size that you, you want it to be when you import it. An introduction to splines to make unusual shapes. So in the first video, we use things like rectangles, circles and lines, which are all very straightforward shapes, whereas splines will let you do a little bit more complex. The use of the revolve tool, which will actually allow us to then make like bottles. Uh, we'll recap the use of offset planes, because we did use that a little bit in the first video. Splitting bodies, the shell command, which again we did cover in the, in the Lego brick, but it allows us to make a, a hollow bottle. Uh, the use of the combine tool, and then the use of the hole command. In the second part, we will jump into a different surface uh, working area that we've not been in before, which is the surface modeling. So from that, we'll then use offsets, we'll use the patch and stitching commands, and then thicken things to make them into solid models. Uh, we will then jump between, so you can jump between multiple workspaces at the same time. So we'll be in the surface modeling area, then we'll jump back over to the solid area. Uh, we we'll use things like the thread tool, tangent planes, and circular patterns. Then in the third part, We'll look at adding materials to your model, inserting decals, so that's a bit of a recap. These are the inspect menu and the section analysis to actually how can you look inside models and make sure it's all done accurately. Going back over to surface uh, workspace again, again doing things like offset, patch and thicken. Using press pull, use of split bodies and then removing any unwanted bodies that you no longer need. And then in the final part of the video we'll go back into another new work area which is the sheet metal workspace. To looking at setting up custom materials, the use of the flange tool, and then finishing off the project and doing a final render as well. Okay, so once you are in Fusion, the first thing we need to do is put in a reference image. So we're going to do that the same sort of way that we inserted a decal in the first video. So we're going to go to Insert, and instead of going to Decal, we're going to go to Canvas. So you get this menu, and then you can start to look to where you need to put or get your images from. So I'm going to, go to Insert from this computer. And then I'm going to find the reference image that I want. So this is a Coke bottle. It'll ask me what plane do I want to put it on. So I want to put it on the, the front plane. I'm going to hit OK. Now at the minute, we have no idea what size that is. So we're going to want to edit that. So what we'll do, on the left-hand side here, I've now got a menu there that says Canvases. If I get down the little drop-down menu, I can select it. I'm going to right-click and go on Calibrate. I'm just going to zoom in. And what it's going to ask you to do is to put two spots. So I'm going to click one at the top of the image and then one at the bottom. And it'll say, okay, how big should that be? Now we're going to do a single um, bottle of Coke. So that is 150 mil. And you can see it suddenly makes it much, much bigger. Okay, so if we'd have made it, if we hadn't calibrated it, we'd end up making a really tiny model. Next thing I'm going to do is so down at the bottom timeline, I'm just going to edit feature again because I actually just want to bring it up a little bit just so that it's in line with the origin along there. So if I put my origin on, so you can see I just want it to be in line. You don't need to do that, it's just good practice because it's going to help me a little bit uh, later on as well. Um, and then, not that it matters because it's symmetrical, but if you ever want to put it the other way around, you can always just click the flip and I can flip it if it's upside down like that as well. So I'm happy with that, and I'm going to click on OK. So I know that's the right size. So now we can start working on actually physically modeling it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to click on this plane here. And the first step is I'm just going to draw a straight line. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard, or I'm going to create a line. And I'm just going to, from the top, now what you can do, so because it's not exactly on there. I've got snap on, but we're going to sort this out in a little bit. I'm going to come there and come straight down like that. And then hit 
exit, so it's off my keyboard. So remember, if you're ever just finished with a tour and you want to like just exit it, just press escape on your keyboard. So I've got a line going straight down the middle. So now we're going to use splines to actually draw the curves on it. Because obviously we've got loads of different styles of shapes. We've got like arcs, we've got polygons, all these sort of things, but nothing that can just do this shape on its own. So if you get a spline, now you can do the shortcut is there, fit point spline or create and spline there. So there's two, there's control point spline or fit point spline. So we want fit point spline. Now just to show you what it does over here. So if you click like that, it'll let you start to do like free and curves like that. Now it's worth pointing out now with like lines and things like that, I said, if you press escape, it'll exit the, the tool. If I press escape like this now, it just deletes it because it never actually finished. So what you need to make sure you do is when you're done, hit the arrow there so you're finished. It's worth pointing that out because otherwise you can spend ages fitting all your splines. Then because you've not okayed it and press escape, the whole thing just disappears. So now I can press escape because I'm not using that tool anymore. But what it means you can do with each one of these points, I can then start to move and alter how it needs to be. So to begin with, you sort of put like a rough little area of it, and then you can alter it later on. Okay, so now that we've had a little play around with that, let's have a go at drawing out this bottle. Now there's two trains of thought for doing it, really. Some people like to put loads. Now, because I'm doing freehand, I'm actually going to turn snap off on my menu so it doesn't snap to any of the, the grids. So some people like to do loads and loads of little splines and some people like to do less. It really is down to preference what you do. But obviously the more detailed um, shapes that you need to have, generally the more splines you need to have. If it's all, if a curve is sort of like, so here I'm making my splines a little bit further apart because the, the curve isn't as, ex, um, as extreme. Sorry, I couldn't speak there. So there's no need to quite do as many um, splines. If it was a more extreme curve, I would need to do a few more splines just to take the shape up. But this is where having a decent mouse is actually quite useful because you can click and zoom and everything like that. Now I'm going to come to here. I'm actually going to stop this line here because this bit here is completely straight. So I'm actually going to do a straight line here. So I'm going to click on this, do a line straight up. Line's coming at an angle a little bit, which I don't want. I want to be straight up like that. And I'm going to go back to my spline. So it's worth taking the time, making sure you get it as accurate as possible. You can always go back and edit this later on as well. So if it ends up not looking quite right, or you down the line you realize you made a bit of a mistake, you can always go back in your timeline and make a few changes as well. Nothing is set in stone. Okay, now I'm gonna escape here and go back to my line tool. And let's just model this a little bit here. Now here, I'm not going to model the lid because we're going to do the lid as a separate part. So I'm actually going to come straight up here just because it will make my life a bit easier. So let's just make sure that comes up at 90 degrees. Oh, no, I put that that way, sorry. Escape. I'm going to come straight up. And I'm going to come across like that. Now, don't worry at the minute, because obviously this line here perfectly isn't rounded, we're going to round all that off later, but it is important for now for the model that the top of my cap is straight across the top and straight down the bottom, um, down the side, because we, we need to be able to have a flat surface we can do sketches on later. But in terms of everything else, I'm just going to have a look down, check that I'm happy, that I've matched up. If anything doesn't, I can always start to come in a little bit, edit it a little bit like that, bring it in a little bit more. So you can see when it's more extreme curves, I had my splines coming a little bit closer together, particularly around here. Maybe I can move a few of these, make it a bit more accurate. I'm 
something like that. And what you'll see then, if I go over, it highlights and it comes blue. That means it's a closed profile. If when you're done sketching and it doesn't go blue, it means that somewhere along the way, one of your lines isn't joined up. So that is a case of kind of going zooming in and checking that everything matches up. Now I could, if I wanted to, trim off the excess bit here. I don't really need to, but if I was going to, I could hit T on my keyboard, I'll go to modify and trim that way and just cut off the excess a little bit like that. And if I'm going to do that, I could also do the same up here and trim the excess off like that as well. That's not necessary, um, but some people like to keep their sketches nice and clean like that. So then I'm going to hit finish. So I've got my profile. So now I'm going to go to create and revolve, or it is a button up here. And Fusion does try to help you quite a bit. If it kind of thinks it sees what you're doing, it will start to do it a little bit for you. So with revolve, it goes, okay, so it thinks I'm going to do this um, profile here already, which I am doing. So then if it doesn't do that, so close that. So profile I want is that one. The axis is basically saying, what's the middle bit you want to have the whole thing revolve around? And that is why I did that straight line first. And then you can see, you can play around with the angle, so maybe you don't want to revolve all the way around. So for example, I could like do a half revolve so you can see what's going on. Maybe i go up a little bit more. So you can see, I could do like a half revolve and you can put any exact measurements that you want. So obviously I want to do a full 360. And then, okay. Now you can always turn your canvas on and off so you can see what you've been doing like that. So now we've got the shape of the bottle. So what we want to do now is turn it hollow, make it more bottle-like and have a hole go into the top of it as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to construct and go to offset plane. I'm going to click this bottom plane. I'm just going to drag it up just to the middle. Doesn't matter exactly where. And click on OK because now what I'm going to do, I'm going to split body. So what body do you want to split? This one. What is the splitting tool? Well, that is the plane that I've just selected. Hit OK. And now, if you look in my bodies folder, you can see I've got two bodies, body one, body two. So let's do this one first. So remember, with your planes, if you want, want to get rid of them, click on it, hit V, and it hides it. So I'm going to shell it. So I'm going to click on there, on the surface, drag it in to see what's starting to happen. So I want to do about about two mil, hit OK, and then what you'll see if you look on the inside, you can see it started to do, or well, it has made it hollow like a normal bottle. Let's then add that one. Let's do the same up here. So let's click on shell. Let's go on two. Hit OK. So again, you can see I've got my bottle that way. So I'm then going to join those back together again. So you can see it's kind of got a line here where it's cut them. So I'm going to combine this and this and hit OK. Oh, so I'm going to then select that one. Combine and say OK. And you see the lines sort of gone because they're no longer separate bodies. And you can see again in bodies folder, I've just got one body there. So then I'm just going to add a little hole into the top because that's actually how you would get the liquid out. So you could, if you want, wanted to, go to sketch, create a sketch and create a circle and extrude down. Or you could use the whole command, which would do specifically that. So you click on the surface. Now this is why I actually use the straight line um, command when I drew my bottle because if you, if it wasn't completely flat or straight, sorry, you wouldn't be able to put a hole in it. And that's when you start to get, you can still, there's ways around it. You'd have to then do some shapes and sort of like split the body across it to make it a completely flat surface again. It just makes your life a little bit easier. So I'm going to click on the surface. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. In the middle of that surface, there's that little white dot. It will snap to there if you go near it. And then you can drag out for how much of a bottle opening you want. And you can see at the minute how far down it comes. And in this whole command, you can see all the, we're not going to do a lot of playing around with this, we don't really need it. So you can do different whole types. You can do like normal, simple, counterbore, count sync. We'll just do a, a simple one. And then you can see here, flat or angled, and you can just see that it will change the shape. And we're just going to drag it down. 
like that and hit OK. And now you can see we have got a complete shape of a bottle. And what we're going to do now, just to show you that it's completely hollow in a proper bottle shape, we're going to go to the Inspect menu and go to Section Analysis. And it'll ask you what plane do you want to click on. So I'm going to click on this front plane here and click on OK. And what it's done is virtually cut it in half for me. Now I can turn this on and off. So on the left hand side I've got an analysis, analysis sorry, um, menu that I can toggle on and off when I wish. And you can literally see it's a completely hollow bottle. This is a really useful tool to have because I can then start to select the inside and edit bits which I'm going to come back to later. So it is always useful to have an inspect menu on there. So in terms of the shape of the bottle, that's now done. We're going to jump between a few different workspaces now. So we've mainly done things in solid and then we have gone into render in here before. We do have two other ones. We've got surface and sheet metal. So we are going to use all three during this little project. So we're going to have a go at modeling the cap now. Now obviously that's why I didn't model the cap or draw the cap shape when I was doing the actual canvas um, itself. So I'll have the canvas on like that. So I purposely left mine off, off a little bit. So I'm going to go over to surface and go to create and I'm going to click on offset and say what surface do you want to offset and I'll say this edge here. Now again this would only work if it was completely um, straight edge. It would not, it would work but it would have a little bit of a problem um, doing it. So what surface does is in solids it makes it a solid shape hence why we had to shell things out. On surface what it does it literally makes like a paper thin layer or something. So it's going to say how much do you want to offset it by? Let's try one mil. Maybe try a little bit bigger. Let's try two mil. Like that looks a bit better. Actually, no, let's stick with one because we're going to thicken it later. And if I zoom in, you can see, let's hide this body. So you can see it's literally making a little paper thin cylinder around the shape. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see now have my body in there but you can see it's just a very very thin there's no thickness to it at all then on the left hand side under bodies I've got a new body there but it's got a different icon so normal solid bodies get you this little white cylinder um, surfaces give you the orange like bit of paper wrapped around so you can see the differences so I'm gonna turn off my bottle there for a second and I'm gonna continue with my lid so I'm gonna go to patch and I'm gonna click on the top there and it's going to cover the top surface for me and I'm going to click on OK. Now at the minute I've just got two bodies there so I want them to be stuck together so under modify I'm going to go to stitch and I want to stitch that one together with that. Green line means OK that's fine it's going to work. So you see I'm now back to one body again. Now I want to make it an actual body and not just like paper so I'm going to go and thicken and what do I want to thicken? I'll just draw a square around the whole thing and I will say one mil. So this is why I, I changed the thickness of my offset when I did it in the first place just to make sure it looked a little bit more realistic and there you go that looks a good shape. So basically I offset it by one and then I thickened it by one to make it two mil thick. I'm going to click on OK, turn my canvas off for a second and you can see actually that meets up really really well with the shape that it would be normally. And then what you'll see again on the left hand side I've got two bodies now so it's now turned off the body is still there um for the lid that I did um but because it's thickened it it's kind of it's um turned it off for me and it's made a new solid body as you can see with the white cylinder there so that is there so I've now got bottle body and bottle lid and what I'm going to do is I'm going to name those so to change that I'm going to click and then click again and we'll call that bottle body and I'm going to do this and call that bottle lid. Okay, and it's just a good idea to name your body so you know uh, you can keep a track of everything. We are going to turn it all into a component in a little bit as well, but it's just kind of good practice to keep it that way. So next, we're going to add a little thread because obviously that is how the lids will actually physically attach. So we're going to go back over to uh, the solid workspace, go to create, and there is a, an option for thread. I'm going to click on the surface there. And I want it to be modelled. So I don't want it to be on the inside, I want it to be on the outside. So let's first of all 
transparency lid this way. Let's go to thread. Now, the minute it's not working, now the reason it's not working is because I've not really left enough surface, <laughs> excuse me, to cut the thread without it not working. So I'm going to press pull, oh, wrong one, press pull, just to make it a little bigger. So let's, yeah, let's try 0.5 and see what happens. Let's go to create, let's try thread now. So why are you not working? Let's have a look and see. Okay, let's just see if the lid is working first of all. Okay, we've not press pulled that yet, have we? So let's try that again now. So let's go get rid of you. Let's try this. Let's press pull this a little bit. Let's do 0.5. Let's try 0.5. Okay, so let's go to create. And let's go to thread. No, it's not doing that yet. Let's try again. Let's press pull. Let's try that another 0.5. Now let's go to thread and see. So why are you not working? Let's try. Let's go to sketch. Let's just see. Is it because it's not a perfect circle? It might be. Let's just do a little bit. Yeah, so I think what's happened is not a perfect circle. So I'm going to just extrude out a little bit just to make it perfect. So I'm going to click that one. And let's click. Oh. Oh, that profile and that profile. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's go to thread. There we go, so now it'll let me do a thread. So that's why you've always got to be careful a little bit as well. It's just because it's not completely straight. It may look like it's straight, but it might be slightly off. So let's go to modeled. And then you can see that it's got an actual thread in there. If you don't go to modeled, so I'll just go back and I'll do that. Let's go back to edit feature. Um, it kind of has like a little, like almost like a decal showing a thread would be there, but we want to have the actual, the actual thread there. So we're going to click on okay like that. So we've done it on that one. So let's see if we can figure out why it's not doing it on this one. So I'm assuming it's probably gonna be the same problem is because it's not completely straight. So in that instance, let's click on here. And then let's, oh, don't we wanna circle right in the middle. Let's go to circle. Yeah, so what I'm doing here now, you can see it's a little bit jagged edge, so you can see it's not actually a perfect circle. And then let's hit E for extrude. I'm gonna click on that profile, kind of bring it down to here. I'll click on join. That now should hopefully, famous last words, be the right size now. So let's see if I can do a thread. Okay, I can do it perfectly. So yeah, that's what that was. So it was nice to be able to have a bit of a accidental, um, a little mistake to be able to solve. So the reason why it wasn't let me solve it at first was because it looked straight, it genuinely did, but I'm guessing it must've been off by like a degree or two here. But you can see now it's actually let me select that surface. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click on thread. And again, so you can see what's happening. So it's done the actual thread for me and click on okay. So you should be able to see now I've got my lid and I've got my thread and then just for the sake of it, let's check and you can see and you can see the threads match up. Not too bad there, maybe a little bit off, but because it's not a working model, it's not 
and well, but if we were to say make a, a working thread which you can do with like 3D printing, you would just be a case of trying to line them up that way as well. Okay, so that is really like the first part of it is we've modelled the bottle, we've modelled the lid, we've got our thread, and that's not bad so far. So there'll be a few, now we're going to start to like refine the details a little bit. So what I'm going to do really is focus a bit on the lid, so let's hide the body. Now if you look at most bottle lids, they don't really have um, just completely smooth, they've got like little ridges in them. So that's what we're going to do now. So I can't create a sketch, if I go on sketch, I can't create a sketch on a non-flat surface or a plane. So I need to go on to construct down here, and I'm going to create a type of plane. Now we've used offset plane so far. You can also use, tan there's all sorts of different planes you can use, and some of them are very, very useful. So we're going to go to tangent plane. Um, so basic geometry in secondary school, tangent planes, lines that are tangent to a circle, obviously, which means it comes into contact with a circle at some point. So I'm going to click on tangent, click on OK, and it's just made a plane that is just touching the surface of that circle. So now what I'm going to do is I can create a sketch. And I'm going to create a rectangle. Now I'm not doing a massively accurate thing. I'm just trying to. This is all just for appearance's sake, really. Click OK like that. Now the ridges don't really go all the way up to the top, so I'm just going to click on P for project and just select this whole body here, and that projects the lines. Now the only reason I'm doing that is so I can offset it a little bit. I'm going to offset by one mil. I'll do the same thing there. Offset by one mil, and the only reason I'm doing that is so I end up with just this profile here, I don't really want the rest of this bit here, and I'm going to click on finish sketch, E for extrude, and I'm just going to click on this bit, and then I'm just going to oh, mess up my camera angle, and I'm just going to, don't want to select you, or you, or you, I'm going to just drag it in a little bit, like that. I've actually selected the wrong thing there, so let me just do that again. Let's go on E for extrude. I'm going to select you. I'm going to come in, and let's say I'm going to go in 0.5, oh, minus 0.5, like that. So I've got a little bit of a ridge, and hit OK. OK, so there's a few little steps there just to be able to make it so I can make a sketch around the surface like that. Now, obviously, I could go around and do that loads and loads and loads of times, but that would take a huge amount of time. And Fusion's got a feature in there that will help with you. So like when we did the Lego block and we made like the bobbly bits, we used a rectangular pattern. We can go to Create and go to Pattern and go to Circular Pattern. Type, I'm going to go with Features because we've done an extrude. I want to pattern the extrude. So I'm going to just select it down in my menu down here. The axis that I'm selecting it around, I'll just collect, uh, select a circle like that. And you see it's starting to pattern it around. So we can put in, let's say, 25. That looks about right. Let's see how it looks. Am I adjust it? I get this, but right, about right. If I wanted to add more, I could always just right click, go on Edit Feature, and up that number or less that number if I wanted to. But I think actually, for the most part, that looks about right. So now I'm just going to fill it the edge around here as well, just to make it a little bit softer. Hit one like that, or maybe point. Okay, so I think that is a lid, modern wise. Should we fill it at the bottom as well here, just to add that, just make it a little bit not quite as harsh as a fillet. Let's try point two, like that. So you see, it now looks a lot more realistic, and actually, something that should have taken us quite a long time with other CAD software, we managed to do quite quickly with this one. So. Generally, at the minute, I think that's gone pretty well. So we're now going to look at adding some materials to it, adding some decals to it. So what we're going to do, so we're going to hit A for appearance. Remember, under modify, you've got appearance menu there, or hit A on your keyboard. Now, hopefully you know what most plastic bottles are made from, which is PET. We don't actually have that material in here. We do have a huge amount of materials built into Fusion, but sometimes it's the case of trying to find something that looks like the one you want, not necessarily is the one that you want. 
So I think I had a look earlier, some plastic, and I went to transparent, and I used uh, clear ac acrylic. Kind of got the same look to it. Um, if we did being technical, you would want like PET, but it's not built in, so it's not a big deal anyway. No one's no one's checking the material that's in there. And then same thing for the lid. So let's bring this in here, but it's not white. It's going to be red. So I'm going to double click. And I'm going to change it to red, so I'm going to bring it across here, and then let's try like a nice dark, like that. So it's going to save my materials that I've got in there. Now remember to always jump back into render as well. So you can see I've got these lines that are appearing. It's worth pointing out, if you jump into render, some of those lines, they just, you can see, they're not actually there on the render itself. It's just the model showing you where you've done the actual modeling itself. Okay, so back over to design, and now what I'm going to try and do is add in the appearance of uh, having some coke in there. So really, in terms of this project, being able to model a bottle is like the main first thing, and then the main other thing we look at is when we do the sheet metal to make like a little carrier to go with it as well. But in terms of we talked about with the Lego block, you want things to look realistic when you render them, and obviously when you're having a bottle of coke, you'd assume there'd be some liquid in it as well. So we're going to have a look at where we're trying to make it look like there's there's liquid in it. So I'm going to turn on my section analysis like that, so it's cutting it in half. This is why it's really useful, because I can actually start to edit the inside of my bottle, and it'll affect it. So I'm going to go back over to surface, and I'm going to do the same thing again that I did with the lid. I'm going to go to offset. So I'm going to click on that surface and that surface, and hit OK. Now it's worth pointing out that, in fact, sorry, I should... I've gone edit feature. I didn't actually put any measurements in there. Let's put in 0.1. Hit OK. Um, it's worth pointing out, it might, you know, it looks like I'm only doing half of it. If I turn off the section analysis, you'll see it's doing the whole thing. It's just because I've cut it in half for this purpose. And then I'll do what I did before. I'm going to create, I'm going to go to patch. Oh, else you actually click it. Go to patch. Click on OK. And then let's go to stitch and stitch that and that together. And then you see it has made it a solid piece that I can now play around with. So I turn my section analysis off. Again, you can see it's just there. So obviously, if that was just to be like that, it's not really a full amount. Okay, so we're going to try and like press pull, make that a little bit bigger. So this is where I'm going to jump in between solid and surfacing again. This is the bit where most people tend to get a little bit muddled up. They they don't check which surface or which modeling area they are in. Okay. Generally speaking, when doing the surface, everything is orange. Then we go to solid, things tend to be yellow uh, blue, sorry. So I'm gonna go to push pull and I'm gonna click on this surface here. And I'm just gonna drag up to whereabouts I reckon the bottle would be full. So let's go to about there and hit OK. Now Oh, wait a second for it to finish loading. So you can see at the minute it's kind of extruding past the lid of, of the actual out of my bottle, which is, is no good. So I want to split this body. So I'm going to go to split body. Body I want to split. I'll click on the wrong part. So let's try that again. Let's go and split body. So I actually want to split that body. Always do make sure you're selecting the right thing. Sometimes when you click, you do click on the wrong thing. That's where things tend to go wrong a little bit as well. So splitting tool, and I want to use the inside of the bottle, like that. So then let's hit on OK. And you'll see here, I've now got extra bodies that have appeared. So that clearly, body 9 there, if I click on that, you can see... That is the one I want I want to get rid of, so I'm going to click on it, right click, go on remove. So I have now got that, and I'm going to change that to liquid. And you see it is a, a solid body as well. So what I'll then do, so I'll click on, so in fact, let, before I do that, let's just quickly go back to analysis as well. So you can see it looks like, obviously it doesn't look like a liquid at the minute, it just looks like a solid grey thing. Um, so I'm going to go to appearances. Now there are some liquids built in. Funnily enough, Coca-Cola isn't a material option. Um, but 
what I found is I used this uh, water wavy C one. I dragged that in, and then what I did, I'll we'll move the menu around a little bit, is I came down and made it like dark, like black, or like a little color like that. So then let's have a look what happens if I turn this off. So you see it has the appearance of like dark liquid. And again, we're going to go back into render just to check. And you see, I'd say that looks relatively like Coke. Obviously, this is just trying to give the appearance. We've done the main work in terms of the, the hardest bit, really, is revolving, getting the bottle, getting the lid, making it look realistic that way. This to, now is just trying to make it look more realistic, give it more context, make it look like a real, a real thing. Okay, so I've now got my bottle, body, my lid, and my liquid. Now, before I had the decals, because if I did the decals first and did what I'm going to do next, it would delete the decals anyway. So I'm going to do this bit next now. So at the top here, I'm going to go on new component and I'm going to change this and call this bottle one. And then down here, you see it's got bottle one here and it's ghosted out. Don't be alarmed when it ghosts out. That just is what happens when you have other components active. So when it means active, it means this little white this, um, dot here is next to it. If I come up here, and reactivate it that way. It's still there, nothing bad has happened to it. So I'm gonna do this, and just quickly, because I just realized I haven't, I'm gonna save what I'm doing, and just change. I'm just gonna save this quickly, just in case something happens, like that. So what I, the reason I'm doing that is now is I'm gonna drag this body down there, and the liquid as well. So I've got all three bodies. Now I haven't dragged the the offset one because we don't need that in many more. So in fact what I can do is I can right click and go on remove. And then you can see down here under bottle one I have now got bottle body, bottle lid, bottle liquid. And that's all there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the decals because when, once I duplicate these bottles so they'll all have exactly the same things on. So I'm going to go to insert, go to decal insert from computer I've got a label I've already done got ready there surface I want to click on this surface here I want to rotate it let's rotate it minus 90 I'm going to click off well I won't click off chain faces yet but I'm going to drag it like this and you see what will happen Is it starts to distort a little bit. Okay, if you click off chain faces, oh, I clicked a surface while doing that by accident. Let's do that again. Let's click on the surface here. Let's rotate it minus 90. Then let's drag it, make it bigger, put it down into position. Like that. So chain faces is the reason why a lot of the time it sort of distorts. I'm going to hit OK and you can see that's gone all the way around without too much distorting. For the most part what I found with students is if it ends up distorting and wrapping around a little bit it's because they've got chain faces selected and it's trying to stretch it across multiple um, multiple faces. So you see under this component here now is where the decal is. Okay so it's all com contained under here. So bottle body, bottle lid, bottle liquid and the decal for it as well. So, again, get in the habit of going back into render to check. And I say that looks pretty realistic. What I haven't done in preparation for this video is I haven't got like a little decal for the for the lid. Um, that is absolutely something you could do as well. So now we've done the hardest bit of the modeling. So now we're going to duplicate uh, this bottle. So I'm going to click on Control C, and then I'm going to Control V, and I'm going to copy and paste this bottle. Now at the minute it doesn't look like anything's happened. All that's happened is these arrows have appeared. It is there, it's just directly over the one that was already there. So this is where I'm just going to go to the top view, use the arrows to move into position, hit OK, and you see it's ghosted out, but then if I then activate the very top level, you can see I've got two bottles that way. 
and then let's do the same thing here. So I'm going to select those two. Let's go Control C, Control V. So what I'm doing, just in case you missed that, is Control C and then Control V, and I give it Control C copies it, Control V pastes it. So I've now pasted two. Again, I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to drag down. Now it's starting to get a little bit laggy, but that's just because I've now got quite a detailed model. And I'm going to hit OK. And then we'll do the same. I've already copied that, so I'll control V is in pasting it. And then let's drag it the other way as well. And then we're going to hit OK. So that's why we put everything into a component before we copied and pasted it, because then we didn't have to bother doing anything else to it. We already had all the liquid in it, we had the decals on it, it already looked realistic. If we'd have tried to copy and paste all the separate bodies, it would have looked a little bit messy and we'd have had to have inserted all decals separately, so six separate times, which would be quite time consuming. So that's the modeling side of the bottle done. The next bit, I said we're gonna go into the sheet metal area because we'll make a little carrier um, case basically like you buy like a little cardboard case with a like a um, packet of a six pack of coke so this is where we're going to jump into the, the sheet metal area now the sheet metal area is very cool it's very very different to using the solid or the surfacing area so what i'm going to do i'm going to jump into another quick um document here and just show you so i'm going to go to sheet metal i'm going to sheet metal rules now, there are a lot of preset materials on already in here. There's things like steel, stainless steel, aluminium are already pre-built in. I've got two custom ones I've added in, which is cardboard and card. I'm going to just keep it on the normal preset first. So, the only thing that is similar with sheet metal to solids is you start with a sketch. And what happens is, so you can still use your normal sketching tools. I'll just do a rectangle and I'll hit finish sketch. And then what you do is you go on create flange. And you click on the profile. And you don't put any of the measurements in because it's all set by the sheet, the rules for the material you've already set. So here's already set as steel, so you can have a look at what it's uh, So it's telling you the, the thickness is 2.5 millimeters, and it's going to tell you how much it will bend, radius, and those sort of things, and hit OK. Now, the reason that matters because now what we'll do, you just go on flange and you click on the edge you want to bend, and you pull up, and you'll see what happens if I rotate my screen a little bit it bends it in the way that no ordinary 2.5 mil steel would bend. So that is the bend radius that would normally happen. Okay, so you hit okay and you keep doing that. So you keep hitting flange, click on the edge you want to bend and you get the same effects you would normally get if you were to bend it in real life. So it simulates how the material would actually act. So you can add in custom materials. As I said, I've added in card so you can see it acts the same way, so you'd see how thick it bends. It shows the radius it would bend, and it would let you know if it interacts or like um, intersects in any way, like that. You can as well grab the widget and change the angle if you wish to, so you can make flaps that way, like that. So that is a quick little introduction to sheet metal. So now we've done that, I don't want to save you. We are going to use sheet metal. So I have already got in here card so I'll show you the settings for that so you can put those in so I changed the thickness to 2.2 millimeters k factor is about how much the material distorts when you bend it so think about if you've ever put in say a sheet of acrylic into the oven or use the line bender and you bend it and then on that exact bend how the material actually distorts and bends and how that affects it I've never not used 0.44 that's like the default setting I haven't really played around with it a great deal but for what we do really 0.44 is is plenty and then bend conditions so this is the setting so you need to change this to 0.25 and change the relief shape to straight and everything else I've kept as is normal with the default um, how I got these settings, really, I looked at a few video tutorials and then a bit of trial and error, and I found this got the best effect for, for card, really. So I'm going to go to Sketch, and I'm going to click on Bottom Surface there, and I am going to draw a rectangle so it covers all six bottles, and I'm going to hit OK, and then I'll flange from the bottom so it doesn't intersect with the material. So I'll click on flange. 
like that now it has actually intersected a little bit so let's just bodies and let's move that down a little bit now the reason so you can just see under the bottom there it's intersecting with the bottles which I don't want so I'm just going to move it now before we start just to make sure it's it's right okay and then you can see it's not interacting that way so now I'm going to start to model like a little card carrier type thing for my my apostles of character. So now I'm going to click on flange. I'm going to click on this edge, and I'm going to start to drag it up. Now, in fact, what I need to do because I didn't check the materials, I'm going to edit feature. In fact, now let's go to sheet metal in this design. I'm going to new rule. In fact, let's go back and delete that actually. So I didn't change the material, which was silly of me. So let's go to sketches because I've already got the sketch that I've done, which is this one. And then let's go to flange. So let's go to sheet metal. Rule. Okay, what have I done? Why are you not doing what I want to do? Let's... Okay, we're back in. So let's just go back up to sheet metal. Let's click on sketch. Again, let's just draw a rectangle like that. Sheet metal rules. Look, card. Why can I set as default? Okay, let's see what happens if I. Okay, you're not letting me change, which is annoying. Okay, let's edit this. So we'll bodge it a little bit. So let's change this. That needs to be 2.2. Keep that the same. And then we want to have burn conditions. We wanted to change that. So let's save that for now. We'll go to burn conditions. 0.25. So let's just. Edit that as well, too. There we go. 0.25. And then everything else is how we want it. So basically, what I'm trying to do there is because I was talking while doing it, I wasn't really paying attention. I flanged and I said straight away I want to do it steel wire. What I should have done is had the card thickness. So what I've done now is I've just changed my steel settings here to make it the card settings. Um, not ideal, but um it's a little workaround just because I was not really like focusing when I was doing it, which was a bit bad of me, really. Okay, so then I'm going to click on okay. Now I'm going to have to move that again because it's interacting a little bit. So let's go to body, move. Let's drag this down just so it's out of the way. Okay, so now we're back to where we want to be a second ago. So I go to plunge, click on the edge. And hopefully you can see now the difference in terms of the radius. It's a much smaller radius. So I've got no particular design in mind. I'm just going to drag up to like see. I'm going by how I feel it should look really. We don't want to cover too much of the decal of the bottle. Now if I do one side, obviously it wants to be symmetrical. So if I hold control on my keyboard and then click the other side, it'll do them both. And actually I want them all to be the same. Well, in fact, now let's not do that one. Let's do like that and hit OK. And then let's do a flange on the other side. And let's bring it up about halfway, like that. 
Object Save Control, click that. Now, obviously, if those start hold together, we need to have some glue tabs. So we can absolutely do those tabs as well. So we're going to go on flange again. And then let's click on this edge here and drag it through. Oh, what's happened there? So what that was saying there is that that's not going to work because you are intersecting. You can see there I have not left a gap. So let's go back and edit this feature. Okay, so let's see what happens if I go to flange. So there is a little bit of a gap, so let's see what happens. So it's a little bit fiddly to move around. Okay, so yeah, maybe I was just selecting the wrong one. So you can see it bends and there is a little bit of a gap going through there, otherwise it wouldn't work. Okay, so let's put that little glue tab there. We're going to just do them all the same, so again, I'm going to hold control on the keyboard like that, so it did the same. Zoom in here, do the same on that one. And then let's do the same on this edge over here. Oh, make sure we can see it. And here, like that. Okay. So we've got sides and top done there. We've got little glue tabs. Now we need to check with sheet metal that it will unfold again so it could actually be manufactured. So there is a an option to create a flat pattern. So I'll say create a flat pattern. What's the stationary face? Just do the bottom and hit OK. And what will happen is it will show you flat pattern error. Okay, so what's that saying there? is that it's not working so something is not going to fold out properly okay so let's have a look at what is not going to work so there should be an unfold so go to unfold let's keep that one stationary so green those will work okay Oh, stationary face. What is it that is not bending correctly? They're all green, so. Well, you can see there it says collision, so it means it's not going to bend. Okay, so what if I do that as a stationary one? No. Okay. So it is saying that those blue ones there are, are intersecting. So it means somewhere along here there is a little bit that won't unfold. Okay, well we'll leave it for now because for what we're doing it doesn't matter. But it, when we look at sheet metal a little bit later on it's something worth pointing out as well. So we're going to just carry on bending this. Now that is now bending in the wrong direction. So I can now drag that up. Let's type in oh no. Type in 90. Oh, what measurement do I want? Oh I just want zero. Okay. Do it that way and we'll bring it up. Like that, and then I want to have the same on this side. <laughs> okay. Now I don't want them to be just straight up like that because it not, doesn't look very nice. So I'm going to go back over to solids, and I am going to go to chamfer. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on this surface here. Come round on this surface, on that corner there. Sorry, not surface. I'm going to do the same on this one, do the same on that one there. And then all I'm going to do is drag in and see how it looks. Put it 
that looks quite realistic. And then maybe I will chamfer a little bit more. Let's see what happens. A little chamfer, let's see how it looks. Let's try new. I think I feel it will probably be better when I try chamfer first and see how it goes. Uh, actually, no, I think that looks all right, actually, doesn't it? Let's stick with that, I think. And then let's repeat that. Let's hold control on that surface. And then hit control. Click on that surface. Okay. All right, so the last little thing really is to have like a handle to go over the top. So then let's go back over to sheet metal. So again, this is what I'm on about before. I said making sure you know what um, workspace you're in. So I'll go to flange. I'm going to drag straight across. Remembering, of course, that I need to have a little bend. So th I've, I've realized really what was going wrong before with the sheet metal. I didn't leave enough of a gap um, to bend. So I'm going to go OK there. And I'm going to leave a bit more of a gap. I'm going to go on flange. And click on this surface and bring it down so that way in reality I could bend it like that and it would interact properly. In fact, let's come across it. Let's extend that a little bit more. Let's a little bit more. Okay. Because it's not a functioning um, bit of sheet metal here, it doesn't matter, it doesn't work exactly. We, it's all about the appearance for this one anyway. That's why it's not too big of a deal that our um, the pattern doesn't completely flatten. Bring it down like that, hit OK. And then we need a natural bit you can hold on to, so let's click on this surface, click on that surface, let's drag up. Right, let's do one surface at a time first. Let's do this one, just because it'll let me do a little angle as well. So let's come up. So let's do this one. There we go. So now I can sort of angle it in a little bit. That's about there, looks good. Let's see how it's all looking. Okay, and then we have to these little holes. So I'm going to go back over to the surface. So I'm going to have, oh, solid, sorry. I'm going to create a sketch. Now, I could create a sketch on that because it's flat, but because it's going in at an angle, it would look a bit odd. So I'm going to use this surface here. What I'm then going to draw across here. So I'm going to, go to create and let's go for a slot. And then let's draw a slot. That and then I'm going to click on E for extrude and drag it straight through. So now I have got proper handle. Let's add some appearance. So we will just get some paint on that. So let's go to paint. So obviously, with um, Coke, everything really is black and red. So let's go to red like that and then perhaps I'll make the handle black so for that maybe I'll choose to go to faces let's bring that in rotate around do the same that way and close let's see how that looks let's go to render Okay, looks good. Maybe I'll just make that just red, I think. Let's go back. Let's go back to appearance. Let's delete that to all red. 
I've got a decal to add to the uh, the side there, so I'm going to insert and decal. Insert from this computer. What I did have, have I got it somewhere. I've got downloads. Where did I put it? Right here. Okay, well, let's let's download a little decal now. So let's go with what do we like the look of? Let's go with that. Let's save image as. Okay, so that's now where I know it is. Let's save that. Let's jump back over here. Click on insert, decal, insert the computer. Okay, there we go. So let's click on the surface here. Let's rotate it around a little bit, change it to 90, maybe make it a bit bigger, and then change faces off. And then let's just turn the opacity down a little bit so it looks a little bit more faded in. Let's go back over to render, see how it's looking. Happy with that. So in terms of the modeling side of things, We've demonstrated the Revolve tool, we've got some sheet metal, we've done some surface modeling as well. So really, that would be done, but like with the Lego block, we talked about having a bit of a scene to go with it. So what I'm going to do now is just build a little bit of a scene. So I think what I'll probably do is make a a bottle to go with it. Go with it. So I'm going to click on this surface here, and I think I will use the line tool. Let's do the turn step on so I know I'm being the line. Let's try oh, 20. And then let's I'm going to revolve a glass basically. So let's come up here. Let's change this to. Sorry. Let's put this back. Did that the wrong way around, really. Let's do a line coming off there. Let's say 25. Then let's have a line connecting those. Like that. Oh, not extrude, that is the wrong thing. Let's go to revolve, sorry. Let's revolve that around there. That's shell. Try that again, shell, just that surface. There we go, let's change that to two. Let's just fill at the edges a little bit. Oh, wrong one. Fill at the edges a bit, make it look a little bit less harsh. It is worth always a little bit of trial and error of trying different fillets, trying different measurements just to see how things look. Okay, let's add appearance. So I think we'll probably use the same. Let's use clear acrylic like that. And then Let's move this into position. So we've got this. So let's move it. Oh. Check we're not too far away height wise. 
like that. That's then. Can I use my analysis? Will that work? Now let's make a new one. So let's go to inspect, Next analysis. Bring it back over to surface. Same thing, like I did with the coke there, I'm going to put some coke in a bottle here, I think. Let's go to offset. Right. One. Okay. Patch. Okay. Stitch. I'm going to stitch you and you. Nothing has been stitched. That's because I've selected the wrong thing, clearly. Okay, let's stitch you. What? Why are you not working? Okay, let's try that again. Let's go to patch. Okay. Now let's try stitch. There you go, so green line, you see that works. Then let's thicken me and you. So you can see that's now thicker. That's now a body that way. Oh no. So you can see my coke is extruding past the bottle a little bit, or the lid, or the lash rather. So let's split body, oh no, let's combine, so then split body. So let's remove that. Now obviously that's a very, very full bottle of coke, so let's drag it down a little bit to about there. Now remember with analysis it's not always doing it as full so it's like that. So then let's add some material to that. We've already got our coke material that we made. Hit close. You can now see we've got a bit of coke there. Now because we've had some coke there let's take one bottle out here. Now what you'll see here, because we've copied and pasted these bottles, if I try and take one, let's take, which one are you? We have this one. Okay, so if I pull this out, put it into position. Okay, so if I were, so I've opened this up here now, and lid. So say I'm going to take this lid off. If I right click and go on move, have a look at the rest of the lids now. They're all going to come off and that's because they've all been copied and pasted as they are. So to do, to get rid of that, I'm actually going to remove this and then I'm going to take another one. So which one is it? So it's this one. So I'm going to copy and at the top here I'm going to go on paste new. So before we went paste, which is just control V, paste new now means that it's its own standalone component that I can now edit and it won't affect the other pieces. Okay, so it is important to make sure you know um, which way around you've got them. So for that one, let's then take the lid off just so you can see. Let's flip it over so we can. Obviously, the whole point of like the renders really is to show off all the features so we want to make sure we show off the inside of the lid because we spent a bit of time modeling up that as well so let's bring that down need to make sure we need to bring that bolt down in a second as well so let's Okay, 
Okay. And then what we're going to do is let's remove some of that liquid. So let's create another section analysis. Like that. Turn it back on again. I'm going to remove, so I'm going to go to press pull. So drag down. So you can see now, I turn section analysis off. It looks like I've poured some coke from the bottle into the glass. Let's just have a nice look at that. Let's go back into render, see how that looks. I think that looks quite good, nice and realistic. And then the last thing I think I'm going to do is I'll just make a little tabletop for it to sit on so it looks like it's not just floating in midair. So let's click on create a sketch. Let's create a section of that one. Now I'll just do a really, really simple, like circular. Tabletop like you would see in standard bar setting. Bring it down, let's say, minus 10. New body. Let's add appearance. Let's go like a normal wood. Let's see, we want a nice light one so it doesn't take away too much from what we've done. That looks okay. And let's just do a little stand so it doesn't look like that's floating in there as well. So, all these little features we're doing just Obviously we've done the main bit that we're getting assessed on or we want to submit to clients or whatever the situation may be. Um, so now it's just want to make things look like all these little features you do, do make things look more realistic. It gives it more context. Like we talked about with the Lego block one, you just want it to, things don't just flow in, in nothingness. There is always a scene that goes with things. So it is worth spending a little bit of time. Uh, putting one together just so when you do your final render it looks realistic really. Let's try it like that. Okay and then let's position that. Let's go into render. And then so you see got my table. That was the main thing, zoom in. You can see the bottle, which is the main part of the design. You can see the carrier, you can see the coat, you can see the lid. Now that lid actually, let's bring that up because it looks like it's intersecting a little bit. So actually, if you can just see it, you can see that wood bit sticking out from that lid. I think that's basically because I need to bring it up just a little bit. So let's, yeah, you can see that's intersecting there. So let's bring up there we go so let's go back to render we really zoomed in and then we'll add a little bit of a scene to it so we go to scene settings so there are some built-in scenes you can go to. So in scene settings here, in rendering, your backgrounds, we've got solid color. You can go to environment and then environment li library. And there are ones that you can just drag in and add things to and see what happens. So you can add things like cool light in there. There are some built-in, uh, where are we? We've got like, uh, um, some of them don't really match. So that looks obviously is way too big for what we're doing. Um, so you can have a play around with those. Or sometimes it's quite nice just to have solid colour. Let's actually just reset because that's messed the lighting up a little bit. There we go. Let's do 
solid color. Black moon, let's try. Just play around with the different kind of lighting settings you have in. There you go, that looks quite nice. And then let's change solid color. And you can just sometimes add like bits of color in that way. Oh, that's a horrendous color. Oh my god, I'm like blinding myself with these colors. Let's try it. There you go. Something in. And then you can just spend a little bit of time just finding what you think looks the best. Let's stick with a warm orange one. Gone. Okay. Go on that. And no. Rather than do a whole scene like we did with the Lego block, so we've got a bit of solid colour, we've got the modelling stuff we've done, with everything like that. So that then to me, I would say that is done. And then either you can go on in canvas render, render in the cloud, or then capture that image as well. So that is the like second really introductory course to Fusion. If you've got any questions, please let me know, or if you've got any requests about any modelling techniques or anything you're not sure of, you want me to try and have a go at putting a video together and doing as well, I'm more than happy to do that as well.